What's going on guys? Fun with Knives back again. And I have yet another Spyderco here. No surprise there. This time it's a Manix 2 Lightweight in S110V. And I want to make it awesome. So welcome to episode 7 of the Knife Upgrade series. Okay, so before we get into what we're doing to this particular Manix 2 Lightweight... Uh, there's already been two I've done uh, where I've upgraded some some parts with some aftermarket things, AWT scales, Flytanium ball cage, uh, Lynch Northwest clip, and this was really the first one I did in this whole series, and it's kind of been my favorite. So I tried to emulate that with uh, this one. Same scales, same clip, just a different finish but I had a little bit of trouble with the ball cage on this model. It just didn't want to fit. So somewhere actually in the knife drawer over here, I have, who knows where it is, but I have an extra, um, one of these aftermarket flytanium ball cages. I think it was a slotted aluminum one in orange, kind of tie that in, but didn't really fit, but for whatever reason, I talked about this in a separate video, this brass one fit in these same scales. So we're kind of going with a similar theme to this one and exact same materials essentially. So <laughs> each one of these has a uh, a theme name that I just kind of came up with. This, this one's pretty bad, <laughs> it doesn't really fit, but uh, it's a stretch, let's just say that. So I got this from GP Knives. It was during a kind of, all knife retailer Spyderco sale. I think it was on April 15th or something. So this is an S110V. This one's an M4. This one's in Rex 45, both um, less than stainless. I'm pretty sure this is completely non-stainless, but either way, these are more tool steels. This one I think is gonna be much more stainless and have very good edge retention, just probably not as tough as those. So let's take a look at this. I'm not gonna go over specs. I think I've probably done that a little too often on this Manix too. Everybody knows about this knife, but I do like these scales. Um, these FRCP scales, not necessarily the material on this one, but the color. Uh, this kind of denim, dark blue, blurple looking thing looks good, but I think we can do a little bit better. So that one is going to change to, again, some AWT Manix 2 lightweight replacement scales. These are Cerakoted. This color was a one I wanted to try quite a while ago. It is Cobalt Kinetics Green. So it's kind of got that OD bazooka green, you know, that olive drab going on, but there's some metallic flake in there. So I think that's gonna turn out really cool. Um, color on this guy was Tequila Sunrise, and this one was Squatch Green, I think. Um, and then for, hopefully, the replacement ball cage, I'm going to go with brass because we know this one works. So we're going to have kind of a OD green and brass slash gold going on. And then where the heck is my new clip? Oh, here we go. Sorry, guys. Ill prepared. Um, we're going with a, I think this is a bronze clip. Same one as this one here. So kind of figuring OD green, gold, brass, bronze kind of color. So we're going to call this one The Hobbit. Um, and no big reason why, I guess, just because you got some gold for the ring, I guess. You have a blade that's uncoated, kind of looks like Sting. And it seems like OD Green is something that The Hobbit wears. His sweater is OD Green or something. Anyway, like I said, it's a stretch, but this knife should be pretty awesome. So let's disassemble it and uh, get this thing put back together. All right, as I was kind of doing this disassembly here, I thought it might be good for those of you who have a Manix 2 Lightweight that want to disassemble it just to clean it or to replace anything. Um, so it's very simple construction. These actually used to be pinned together. You couldn't take them apart. I have one here, old school one. This is, uh, I don't know if it's a first gen or not, but see, everything's pinned together. You can adjust the tension on the pivot but that's it, you can't take that thing apart. I believe that fix to make it, you know, 
disassemblable, if that's a word, uh, was part of their constant quality improvement, their CQI, um, and it's very easy. So obviously you have two plastic scales here, and through these portions, the body of the knife, it's simply two T8s that are captive, so not free spinning on that other side, and the pivot is two T8s, one of these is the pivot. This one's to the um, stop pin area here in that lock bar face. And then something you don't need if you're going to move specifically to these AWT scales is this kind of pivot collar. But either way, I'm going to not need the entirety of this. We'll see if we can do this not on time lapse and I can <laughs> provide some commentary. But this is how... The Manix 2 lightweight locks up. The standard Manix 2, I would assume, is exactly the same, except it's got liners. G10, obviously. So much like an axis lock, you pull the cage down or the crossbar or whatever. But rather than it being a crossbar, it's a steel ball bearing that rides and then notches right on that side of the tang. Your backside of that knife hits the lock bar and it's... Very secure, very strong as well. I think you would take quite a bit of force to make that slip. And of course, you're probably not going to crush a steel ball bearing. So that's the entirety of that construction. It's really easy. So I'm going to pull this lock back and slide this blade off if I can. If not, we'll kind of just wiggle it until we find our, our sweet spot here. And this is why I do this on time lapse. You can't see... You struggle. There we go. One phosphor bronze washer here. And let's see, I'm going to take out that pivot on the other side. That pivot screw, rather. Let's see if I can hold on to this with just finger tension. There we go. So, I'm pretty bad about it, but I try to keep things organized on a mat to disassembly but this one's pretty simple pop that screw out if i can what is that holding on to a whole lot of nothing okay so the pivot area itself i don't know if this will focus on it it is d-shaped you can see your hexagonal, i guess but one sp one part is flat so that will need to be on your mind when you're reassembling so you got the other a stop pin area. I guess there's no real pin here, but whoops. Okay, so stop pin screws, pivot hardware, body hardware. One T8, that's also another good thing about the Manix 2 lightweight at least, is it takes one type of driver, just T8, no T6s. And for those of you who have questions, um, this wire clip is fine. I actually have a no problem on it on my original Manix 2 lightweight. This thing's like eight, nine years old. Tension's fantastic. But it seems like any knife that comes with a loop over one, this is a lens replacement, one that has a loop over, they're just not very secure. They tend to get bent out pretty easily. So I would rather trust a lens Northwest clip. So that's what we're replacing too anyway. The one with that guy here. So um, this is kind of the tricky part. It's not too terrible, but um, this lock bar needs to come out and the cage needs to come kind of with it and the ball bearing will kind of be floating with it at that point as well. So just kind of s remove that a little bit and this lock bar should come free just like that. So here is your ball cage, the st steel ball bearing and the spring. And note that this side is captive, so the ball can't come out, but it can come out of the other side. This side points up within the knife towards the spine like this. So, all right, let's try to keep that together for now. Here's your just kind of lock bar. I actually don't even know what to call that. That's not technically a lock bar, but anyway. So these scales obviously remove these pivot collars. So we just kind of do that process in reverse. So that fits just there. And then I'm going to take the spring 
off of the previous cage onto this one. Hopefully it works. Maybe this is hard to do through a iPhone lens, but pop that ball in there. Okay. So now slide that in. So at this point, you don't want to put any hardware in, or at least I don't, because you need to fit one side of this ball cage through scale like that. Then you can approach from the rear here. Make sure that spring's making contact. And now we're ready to begin construction, at least on one side. So just careful here that your spring doesn't come out this way because that thing will go flying. So there we go. So now we have no hardware in this. It's just kind of holding together with some spring tension and tight tolerances, hopefully. So um, I did get some new knife lube. This is knife butter. So let's hope that's good. I got it from the Lynch Northwest site along with all these other clips I've been getting. And then I wanted to try a new thread locker. This is Vibratite. Medium strength, removable. I mean, obviously never want to put some super strong stuff on knives if you ever plan to disassemble them again, clean them or whatever. So let's see what this looks like. I wonder if it's in a paste form or if it's in like a liquid form that you apply. What the hell is that? Do you have to cut that off? <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Well, there's no instructions on this, so I just assume that you would either break this off or cut it off. So I guess I have plenty of knives here. Let's see what happens. I can't imagine that's in a plier or anything. All right, well, that'll come towards the end anyway. Okay. Odd. All right, so first thing I like to do is keep that uh, kind of pivot area, or I'm sorry, the uh, this area along the top of this lock bar in place. I don't snug anything down, I just kind of put that in there so it's holding its shape. And then here's where I was talking about your pivot is going to need to be oriented in a certain way. So that flat part here is gonna to need to go down. This is always the, the tedious part, but. Okay, wow, that fit pretty good. I think that coating is actually gonna hold it in pretty well. Um, I'm gonna put just a dash of oil here because one of these washers is gonna sit directly on this scale. Here we go again, using new shit. Not getting anything out of my knife butter. Oh, it's way thicker than I thought, and it's... Look at that color on that thing. I didn't think it looked like that. I'm squeezing the bejesus out of this, and nothing's happening. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that wasn't on camera. So, <laughs> apparently there was some dry blockage in there. I don't know if... I'm gonna leave in the video of me struggling with it, but <laughs> um, I got it out and I also got it all over my desk, so that should be fun. <laughs> oh my hell, what is wrong with me? All right, so we're gonna put one of those washers there, sits directly on the scale, orient or pivot in the right direction, potentially. It looks like they used a little bit of thread locker, nothing crazy. Okay, so at this point, take one of my pivot screws, just a little bit of tightness there. Go in with the blade, pulling the lock back just a touch, and we're good to go. Okay, so now it's as simple as overlaying the top scale. If we're lucky, everything will go together and the lock will still function, which it does. <laughs> awesome. Um, something I just noticed as well on this other one, this has got, it omits one of these uh, 
I guess I didn't just notice that, but something to, to bring up. Normal Manix 2s have two body screws. This only has one. It omits one because it's just kind of open space there. So um, just something to note as well there. Okay, so we're going to put another kind of top side lock bar screw in. Not super tight or anything. Okay, lock still functioning. I'll go back after the fact here. Back out these screws one by one, add a little bit of Loctite. I just don't want to do that before this is entirely set up. And then, for whatever reason, looks like I have the T8 side on the show scale rather than that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll keep the same theme, I guess. So these are also kind of D-shaped captive ends, these screws. So... Oh, there we are. It actually fits nice and snug. Hopefully not too much. Let's hold that in on the uh, clip side scale. Okay, we're functioning pretty well. Okay, so nothing's tight. Obviously the centering is insane because I got different tensions on different screws. And then or clip let's see interesting how did i do this previously ah that's something i did not even realize oh duh that's why your pivot screw works just like the body screws it has that captive end on the other side so poke that out and use it almost forgot that Hopefully this isn't just me breathing heavily, crouched over a tripod. Come on now. Okay. That's ready for our pocket clip screw. So these I found, I say all the wire replacement ones have pretty good tension. So hopefully I don't have to mess with that after it's on the knife. Actually, let's do this. Make our lives a little easier. Come on. Try not to swear too much, because that's usually how these assemblies go. Because uh, I know I won't be, be fast forwarding through them, I mean, but okay. All right, that's how we're looking. That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, let me tighten this down, clear the desk. We'll kind of look at a final reveal. There we go. That's my uh, Hobbit themed somewhat. Uh, Manix 2 Lightweight S110V. Some AWT scales, Flytanium brass ball cage in your Lynch Northwest replacement titanium clip. Um, these uh, clips and everything are gonna have a little bit of variance. So obviously this one's more worn, but it came out more gold. This one's very muted. So I'll probably have to clean that a little bit. And then even these from Flytanium are slightly different color. So this and this doesn't necessarily match all that well. Um, I might even rethink the name on this one. I don't even know. But the biggest problem is we are running into the same issue that we ran into on the Agent Orange where the ball cage isn't fitting. So we had to keep the OEM one. This one, though, is so, so close that... See, centering's good. Everything up here is just slightly loose. You see that cage will all the way engage, but there's just a slight push and it's there. So I'm just going to break this one in. Uh, that was my initial plan on this guy, but whatever. But I think the colorway at least looks pretty good. I actually like this Cobalt Kinetics Cerico a lot. Um, and the tension on the clip is pretty good. So now we're in... Wait, video's not quite over. Um, I, don't, I have a bunch of shit on this desk, but uh, I took this cage out. I tried a slotted titanium one. I don't know why these things give me so much, so many issues. But I tried this one and it was even worse. It like did not fit. So this is reserved for if and when I get a normal Manix 2 in G10 
with full stainless steel liners. So I was like, I'll just put this back together, try to work it in. And I also uh, gave this clip a little bit more retention. So that's definitely going to stay in the pocket now. But centering's good. And check out this. Action's good. Lock is functioning perfectly. Uh, the lock's a little sticky, I guess. Or not sticky, rather. The action's a little slower than I'd like, but it's brand new, brand new scales and aftermarket pieces. But it's working just fine. So I think I just probably assembled that a little bit better off camera and didn't tighten one side of the pivot or something too much too early. But it's it's great. Detent is good. Like, completely usable. Lockup's super strong, super stuck in place. No wiggling side to side, up or down. That spring tension is pretty stout, though. Got to get a good grip on that that ball cage to move that back. But anyway, one final look at the Hobbit Manix 2 lightweight with all this cool stuff on it. I like it quite a bit. So thanks for watching, guys. And remember, have fun with your knives.